All right, we're happy to be joined now by Colorado head coach Tad Boyle and student athletes Evan Batty and Elijah Parquet. Uh, we'll open it up for questions. We'll go to Pat Rooney in the back. And Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Um, Tad, uh, Evan obviously is uh, someone that's been through a lot already in his collegiate career. Uh, he's been a leader for this program, but. How has that leadership maybe evolved this year uh, in his last year and, and without his old classmates? Yeah, Pat, as you know, uh, Evan's been a leader from day one. He stepped foot on campus and uh, he just led in his own way. Last year, obviously, he had a lot of guys that came in in his recruiting class that, that aren't back. So I think uh, in the spring, it was it was uh, a little difficult for him to adjust, you know, but uh, uh, this year, just another challenge for him to take on that leadership role, and, and he's got a guy to his left, and Elijah Parquet, who's going to going to help in that. And and uh, McKinley did a great job for us, as as all of our seniors did last year. But uh, now it's on these two guys' shoulders. But Evan is just a natural leader. Uh, people are drawn to him. Uh, he influences people. Um, you know, if you if you know Evan Batty, you, you love him, and and we and we love him. Kevin in front. Kevin Dan with Pac-12 Networks. Uh, Two-part question, I guess, Evan, for you kind of following up on Pat's question, how do you see your leadership role kind of evolving with McKinley no longer here? And, and then, Coach, I saw you recently said kind of the point guard position is kind of a three-headed monster. Just what have you seen from your point guard options kind of in practice, and how do you envision those minutes that, that were left behind by McKinley now kind of playing out this year? Well, um... Compared to last year, I mean, last year we had a bunch of seniors who I didn't have to hold their hands so much, as I would say, um, through everyday practice and everyday, you know, activities. But this year, um, you know, I'm really just trying to you know, battle, the, battle the line of when to lead and then when to let them figure out for themselves and let them learn. So um, I'm trying to, you know, fight that urge and uh, just lead when I feel the need to and, you know, just let them grow, honestly. So, yeah, our point guard position is is going to be uh, uh, something that's going to evolve as the year goes. Obviously, having a guy like uh, Elijah in the backcourt who's got the experience and is uh, a lockdown defender really helps because um, e uh, Eli can play the point as well. But uh, I look at uh, Keyshawn Bartholomew, who basically backed up uh, McKinley last year has had as good of an off season as anybody in our program. He stayed in Boulder the whole time, worked out with Coach Englehart, um, has really worked on his game. He can score the ball. He's ultra fast and athletic. Uh, and then K.J. Simpson is a freshman who's really dynamic. And again, in the open floor, uh, Keyshawn and K.J. are going to be, and, and, and you add Eli to the mix, I mean, as fast and athletic of a, of a lineup as, as, as you're going to see. Uh, and then Julian Hammond is a kid from Denver, Colorado, who – is uh, has had a great, great uh, start to his career. He's one of those guys that's just doesn't wow you with any particular skill set, but he just makes plays and and uh, is really becoming more comfortable. You know, every every practice, quite frankly. So I look at it as a three-headed monster. You know, with KJ and and Julian as as, as freshmen, and then obviously Keyshawn uh, coming back for his third year in the program. He redshirted for a year. Um, we're still one of the few programs that will do that. Um, but uh, those three guys, and, and you add Eli to the mix, uh, our point guard position is going to evolve as the year goes. We'll go to Ben Parker. Uh, ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com over here. Um, I noticed you guys are playing Nebraska this year in an exhibition game, kind of renewing a robbery in a sense, though it is for charity and it's an exhibition. Um, talk about kind of what went into that decision, um, and then is there any chance you guys might do a home-and-home -home series with them in the future? Yeah, no, um, that, that actually is an exhibition home and home. We're going to, they will return to Boulder uh, next year for a charity exhibition game. And, and these games are great for the community because it's not a part of the season ticket package. And the local charities that, uh, that Nebraska has chosen to benefit from that game will benefit from us going there. And the benefit for us is 
we've got 10 freshmen and sophomores who, uh, and, 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 and five of those guys are freshmen who've never played in front of a crowd before, and our sophomores haven't played in front of a crowd. So Nebraska draws very, very well. Obviously, the Colorado-Nebraska uh, rivalry that goes back to our Big 12 days uh, is still there, but it's a great way for both of our communities to benefit from an exhibition game. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I've always been a close scrimmage guy, but I think with this year's team, and, and again, uh, Eli and Evan are, have, have got some experience, but the rest of our guys don't in terms of playing in front of crowds. So that'll be a great opportunity. We'll go back to Pat. Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Uh, Eli, I've asked you a little bit about this in the preseason, but you've always kind of been a quieter role player type guy for this team. How are you adjusting to having a bigger leadership role and, and being on stages like this one? Uh, yeah, uh, I've always been a, a example first guy, but I've been working over the off season, uh, being a more vocal guy with the young guys, especially in practice, getting them in the right spots and make sure they're making the right reads and stuff. So I've been stepping up a lot on my vocal part. Anybody else? We got Rocco. Hey, Coach Boyle, Rocco Miller with Bracketeer.org. Uh, so last year, unbelievable year, uh, you know, number three in the pack, 12 in the offense, number two in defense. Obviously, you lose some key pieces. You know, how do you try to maintain that level of performance uh, with the new pieces you have to work with? And obviously, Evan back and, and Eli. Um, and, and second part to that is, you know, you look at the schedule, you obviously loaded it with home games. You got the two big ones with Kansas and Tennessee, nationally recognized programs. Um, in terms of trying to get in position to be in position for a bid, obviously key to maybe get at least one of those two. Just talk a little bit about the season outlook and, and how you try to maintain those level of metrics. Obviously, last year, too, it's number two in the nation in free throw shooting. <laughs> like, there's a lot to maintain there. So just your thoughts. No, there are. There's a lot of things that, that we have to maintain. I, re I remember distinctly, uh, you know, our, our, our team meeting uh, last spring when the seniors are gone. It was pretty a barren room, <laughs> Heaven and Eli and Keyshawn and a few other guys. But, you know, the challenge that we laid at their feet was, you know, our, our program has set some standards for, the, for itself now, and, and we expect to be an NCAA tournament team year in and year out. We expect to be in the upper half of the league and hopefully competing for a championship. You know, we made it to the championship game of the Pac-12 tournament last year, came up a little bit short against a, an Oregon State team who obviously was playing very well that time of year. Um, but, but the challenge really is the standard has been set. We always want to be in the top three in uh, the Pac-12 in field goal percentage defense and rebounding margin. I mean, that, if, if, if you, we can do that, uh, we're going to be in pretty darn good shape because we've recruited some really talented offensive players. But as we all know, offense comes, offense goes. If we can defend and rebound every night, uh, obviously free throw shooting, you mentioned that. You know, we led the country for – the majority of the year had a chance to break an NCAA tournament record uh, there at the end and, and, and missed a few and, and slid. But uh, uh, big standards were set last year. And uh, so we just got to continue to get better every day. And, and, and that, you know, that schedule was a little bit by design. I'd, I'd like to have at least one road game in there. But the Kansas game, you know, that, that series was supposed to be done last year. But because of COVID was moved and Tennessee, we picked up. So... That became a home game. Um, so we, we go to the Virgin Islands. We have three neutral site games there and obviously 10 uh, road opportunities in the league. So um, uh, November and December are going to be big months for this for this team. And, and you mentioned the Tennessee and, and Kansas games. Those are big ones. But you know what? When you're playing for an NCAA tournament bid in November, every game is a big game. So it's not, you know, not just just, just those two. Any other questions? Go to Eldridge in the back. Eldridge Rakaz and Pac-12 Network. Coach, how difficult is it going to be to lose a guy like McKinley Wright? You know, he started for you for four years. Leadership-wise, I can see it's not going to be a problem because I can see Evan is the leader. But just all the other intangibles that, that McKinley brought to the table, how difficult is a, of an adjustment has that been so far in, in the training camp for you guys? 
Well, it's nice to have a guy like Eli who was with, you know, McKinley in the backcourt. He saw what McKinley, you know, uh, did every day. And, and, and the thing that made McKinley Wright so special in my mind is he was an everyday guy. And that's what Evan is and that's what Eli has become, in my opinion, over the last year. So having two guys like this who kind of uh, saw what, what McKinley brought to the team, saw what he brought to the table every single day, uh, they're they're doing that this year, and then you know having Keyshawn, who played with McKinley, was with McKinley for two years, saw what he did and the impact he had on the game and practice. Um, the freshmen don't know because they never played with him, but they hear stories and uh, and we talk about them a lot. Uh, but but listen, we're in great shape leadership wise. Now it's just the time for our young guys to grow up, and we better grow up quickly. Gotcha. And, and I got a question for Elijah, who I, I I know haven't been watching Evan his whole career. But I, I walked past you in the, in the hallway, and I was impressed with your size. And just even seeing you sitting up on the stage, you're making me nervous. I'm glad I don't have to play against you. But what's your mindset going into games? What's your approach? Are you a defense first guy? But tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm, uh, my defense gets me going. So I go out there. I take it personal, my matchup personal. So anytime my guy scores, like, I take that personal. I get mad. So that gets me going on the offensive end. I don't let the offensive end affect my game. So. When I'm going defensively, then I'm going offensively. So I'm kind of backwards where everybody else goes. They get offensive-wise, get them going defensive-wise. I'm, I'm the opposite. Um, and I'm, one thing I will say about Eli, he can come from the weak side and block a shot. <laughs> There's no He does it in practice all the time. PJ in the back left. PJ, Carlos Mo, Pac-12 Networks. Um, Ted, I mean, I, I, I remember how significant it is to get to, you know, sometimes those of us now in the media, uh, when you get to an NCAA tournament, it's an achievement. How significant for you guys do you think going forward winning that game in the NCAA tournament? It's first time in a long time, and how much will that help your current team and, and other teams going forward? I think it'll help a lot, PJ. And as you know, as you get into that tournament, I mean, a lot of it has to do with matchups and are you playing well at the time? and. You know, Georgetown was a great matchup for us, and uh, Florida State not so much. Um, and and we've got to learn. You know, last year we went to Tennessee, and they they kind of handed it to us early in the year. And Florida State did the same thing in the NCAA tournament. So I think it's it's really good to have guys who've been multiple times now, and that's why why if you can get back and you just keep chipping away, chipping away, and you just never know when it's going to be your year. And again, I look at Oregon State and what they did last year. You know. They really struggled in, in, in November and December, but they just kept getting better and getting better, and, and they made it to the Elite Eight. Elite eight. So you know, that can happen to anybody. I, I really believe that. So we got to continue to uh, believe in ourselves, believe in the process, and, uh, and know that, that any year can be your year. And, uh, but winning is the next step for us. Getting to a Sweet 16, an Elite Eight, hopefully a Final Four someday, um, that's the next step for this program. Elijah, why Elijah and not Eli anymore? Um, I'm getting older, getting them grown man stage, so I guess it, it, was, it, it made sense to full, use my full name. So I've gone by Eli my whole life as a nickname. I figured it was a good time to go back to the full name. We'll go to Casey. Where you guys, Casey Jacobson with Pac-12 Network and Fox. Uh, this question is for Evan. Um, a lot of us here have followed your career, even in high school at Villa Park in Orange County, and now you're a veteran in college basketball. You, you have a unique story, though, Evan. Can you talk about now, as you sit up there at the stage of your career and your life, look back on what these last several years at Colorado has meant to you and what this season means to you? Yeah. Um... You know, it's funny, you know, coming in as a freshman, uh, partial qualifier, didn't play, redshirted that year, you know, you learn a lot from sitting out, you know, um, and then carrying that into my next three years playing and just trying to do everything right, I'd say. So, and being afraid of messing up, that's kind of where I moved on to this year and I'm kind of like, if I mess up, I'll get it right the next time. Um, I just have a much more simpler approach to everything. And um, my patience is getting longer, um, especially with my young guys. I had to have my patience with my young guys. So 
Um, I look back on my three or four years here already and just am so grateful and, and so you know, appreciative of the relationships I've made, uh, the coaches I've been playing for, and my teammates I've, I've been playing with. So it's, it, it, I'm, I'm blessed for sure. All right. Anything else? We've got Pat Rooney. Last question. Uh, Ted, I think one of the more intriguing players on your team would be Jabari Walker. Uh, a lot of explosive performances last year, uh, a lot of freshman stuff like foul trouble as well. What does he have to do to, to maybe take that next step this year? Well, uh, starts with staying out of foul trouble because, <laughs> you know, Jabari was you, you look at his numbers and they don't jump off the page at you until you look at the fact that he only played 14 minutes a game. And so what he did in the time that he was on the floor, he was very efficient. And he, he impacted the game in a, in, a, in a big way. He can do it by shooting the ball, uh, by rebounding the ball. Uh, we're really uh, challenging him to attack closeouts and play off the dribble a little bit, you know, make, make plays and be unselfish because people are going to start preparing for Jabari Walker now, uh, whereas last year he kind of was the beneficiary of people keying on Evan or, or, or uh, uh, Jariah Horn or, or – uh, you know, Deshaun or guys like that. So he got some, a lot of free looks last year that he's not going to get this year. And so it's just the evolution of becoming that, you know, going from your freshman year to your sophomore year. And, and we've tried to prepare him for that. And, and, and he's going to be a big, big part of this year's team, without a doubt. And, and I would also add Tristan Da Silva into that mix as well, because both those two guys played a fair amount as freshmen. And, and we're going to need both those guys to step up for us to be successful this year. That's all we have time for. Well done. Thank you for your time and Thanks. best of luck. Thank this you. Season.